two maximums on the solo class, of course, with Simon Wig and Mark Lauren, but very, very close to them. On three points only, Marty Hayden, Marty Cox and Joe Screen, and Andy Riley. And even closer to them still, Trevor Banks on four points, Alan Farmer and John Boston. Top of the sidecar class, we still have two outfits unbeaten, Alan and John Blewett, Roger Mesa and Steve Bailey. They're unbeaten at the moment. Ken Lane had only dropped one point, Dave Steele also only dropped one point. Dropping two points, Shane Baker and Andy Sugg, and close to them, Russell Lee and Richard Piggott. So that's how they stand after two legs. Remember, one more leg to decide who it is that competes in the big finals at the end of the day for the 1991 Barks Fernandes Trophy. Before then, we've got Race 20 on the line where they put uh, both the lap scorers and me to the test because a lot of these riders that we haven't seen for quite some years, perhaps. Oh, Julian Wigan, you can see on the outside of the gate, most of British machinery problems sorted out, so if we look to see them come past us, we'll try and identify them. Blue Boston, as you see on the inside, Derek Hole has gone into the lead, John Priest, I can see up there as well, Bernie Lee is up there in fourth at the moment. So they go down the back straight, that looks to me like Derek Hole is the lead, but John Priest... Up in the third. They for the second time. It is Derek Hole that leads. John Priest is in there in second. Bernie Lee is in third. Ian Barkley, I can see moving through back in fifth at the moment. But now moving to Derek Hole coming out again. He's still over his shoulder. He's a look to see where John Priest was. Bernie Lee is still up there in third, Ian Barkley under pressure from Sue Jones. So again, it looks as if uh, he's pulled out all the stuff. Last half play goes out for our uh, fast masters riders. Julian Wick back there, number 25, with Tom Ledbetter, number 20. This is Lou Coffin coming past me now, number 22. We'll see all these riders having a go once again. As they come around, that's that last bend. It's going to be a line, but very good against it. John Lee gets second. Bernie Lee gets third. Cyril Jones for fourth, Ian Barkley for fifth, Tom Ledbetter crosses the line, Julian Wick goes past me, place 22, Lou Coffin, 10th place, number one, Alan Ramsey, and 11th place, now we've got 11 in there, but we did, we've got 17, perhaps he came out in the wrong race, and I don't even know who's 17, do I? Do I have a 17? Yes I do, Lee Barley. So, in the winning time, 137.4. The numbers, if you missed any of those, sorry for the confusion, 9, 5, 91, 79, 109, 20, 25, 193, 22, 1, and 17. The winning time, 137.4. So the rest of the competitors in the class last this solo team event, they come underway, and it looks to me like Dougie Dealing has made a good start. So a very, very small figure of the Sun and Center star, Dougie Dearden. He leads as they go around that first bend. We're looking to pick out one or two of the riders from the rest of the field. Very, very good start. I remember his first ride, he was leading and then dropped back through the field. So we're wondering see if it's going to be the same thing this time. Well, Dave Freddingham is the rider in the white jacket in second place. He's being pursued by, I believe that was Glenn Armstrong. But Dougie Dearden is certainly setting the pace at the moment. He doesn't look like being caught at all, does he? And I do believe that is 16 in for John Cox, who's going all the way around the outside in those red levers. So John Cox putting in that last piece. I've just seen the line a little bit. But Dougie Dearden is riding for Lewis Hopkins' feet. He takes the last half flag, leading from number 19, also in Luke Coffin's team, Dave Freddingham. John Cox, the one that's got to try and make up the places for Wiggs Witches. Dave 
second, Pete Reed holding third, and Paul Hurry now putting Pete Reed under pressure. Yeah, possibly a change back there in that third place because Paul Hurry is getting third. Started slowly this afternoon, but he looks to have got better as the afternoon has gone on. Andy Riley still looks very confident up there in second place. Gets a lot closer this time as they go into that top bend. So I wonder if there's going to be a last bend challenge. Andy Riley very confident on this weekend. I wonder if he's going to be a challenge. Marvin Fox goes down off that this bend. Not enough time for Andy Riley. Marvin Fox takes it. Andy Riley gets second. Pete just hangs on to third in front of Paul Hurry. And John Woolsey comes across the line in the fifth place. Well, as we look to race 25, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of eyes on this one. Remember, no Mark Seabright, but 55 Paul Fry comes in his place. That's the change to the programme in race 25, but anxiously we look to see. Right up in the top scoring is Trevor Banks. Well, you might know how the point score is going. It's one for a win, two for a second. So the lower the point score, the better the position. Trevor Banks sits on four at the moment. But Simon Reed must have seen Marlon at the unbeaten once again. It is Wrigley. He's unbeaten so far this afternoon as he comes into his third ride. As we look to that top corner, it is Wrigley coming out, but Trevor Banks is right there. Gary Lord is up there in third, Dave Wright in fourth place at the moment. The rear of the scrap is right at the very front because Trevor Banks is putting Simon Wig under a lot of pressure. Again he tries to go around the outside. And again, we pulls it very, very tight, but Banksy goes for that faster, wider line. Thank you. 
Dave second, Steve Jewison having to lay on the brakes to close up behind Andy So Dave Steer comes to the outside line around the outside of Steve Jewison, but it's fast and it's close to the front there. We go Russell and and Lance Maskell holding second at the moment. Andy Soap still in second. I've had a, an urgent message from somebody in the picture. Talking shocks. Take a contact, Simon Wig, urgently, please. That's down in the pits. Meanwhile, we've got race 28 going into his last lap. And he's rustling it from the race. He's still holding second. 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 He's still Qualifier ride to the sidecar class. One edition, 
as it has been all afternoon, in grid four, number two, Neville Benko and John Mitten. They go from grid four, change in grid two, it's not John Halsey, it's number 20, Chris Truin and Duncan Patton. So those are your two changes in race 30. But I think a lot of eyes will be on for Roger Mita. He goes from grid three. Roger Mita and Steve Taylor have got it going in the first bend. But Rob Cameron is right up there with him, very, very close behind him. Rob Cameron has been getting faster as the afternoon goes on. So we wonder if Rob Cameron can actually catch Roger Mita. Never been full, going right the way around the outside of three outfits as he comes past us. in the third place. Chris Truy moves up in the fourth. As we look to the front, it is Roger Misa and Steve Bailey that still lead. Farmer, Rob Cameron and Steve Smith. Neville Penfold and John Mitten still there in third place. Chris Truy and Duncan Patton holding fourth. It must be going through Roger Meester's mind that Alan and John Blewett qualified by being unbeaten. They're looking to do exactly the same thing. Rob Cameron and Steve Smith desperately trying to get back on terms with them. Into the final, Roger Meester and Steve Bowley. Second place to Rob Cameron and Steve Smith. And in third place, Neville Penfold and John Mitten. Chris Truman coming in fourth, Jerry Adams fifth, and Andy Bray in sixth place. See Race 31, we're moving to, it's the Past Masters. We're looking at the final, representing Coffin's team is number 19, that's Dave Fridium. 109, Ian Barkley. Number 12, Ian Thorogood. And number 2, Bob Coles. On the weak side, number 193, Mike Barker. Number 1, Alan Ramsey. Number 25, Julian Wigg. And number 11, that's Phil Barley. Oh, away we go. I think uh, one of our riders actually missed the start. That was indeed number 444, four, four, Roger Clark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. I think we got one more than we thought we were going to have. certainly Julian Wigg leading. Ian Barkley in second. Ian Fowler in third. Looking at number 19 moving. Threading them in the white jerking back in what was for place, but then the outside of the Well, they each other very, very well on the organising side of things. Ian Barkley takes over from Julian Wick. Ian Thorgood still there in third place, but under pressure from Dave Threddingham. And Ian Barkley being allowed to get away a little bit. So Back in third at the moment, and pressure from Ian Thorogood, he dies back under and gets that third place back. Bob Coles is still up there in fifth at the moment, but the changing seems to be for that third place. Race 31 it was, and the result is, I think I'll do this quickly by numbers if I can, because we've got 
the other race already on the line is 109 in first, 25 in second, 12 in third, 19 fourth, 2 fifth, 4 4 4 6, 1 7, 11 8, and the time 142.44. Already we've got race 32 away from the start. This is the better of our past masters. It's the A final for the past masters. On the coffin team, we've got number nine, uh, Derek Cole, who I think is going to be right up the front there, and indeed he is at the moment. Number 79, Cyril Jones. He'll be right up there as well. I think that's still in third place at the moment. Number 60, Dougie Bearden. Looking for Dougie Bearden as they come past her. And Dougie must have missed the start for Bearden. comes round now. Best part of half hour. Oh, Coffee machine for Dougie Bearden. He's running for the next team. Number 16 is John Cook. He should be up there somewhere as well. But as we look to see them come past, good bit of scrapping from these fast masters. Rich in the memories of a lot of people. Remember when he was riding, known as the two valve king. Derek Hall goes down the back straight. Back there in fourth place. A lot of people will be pleased to see that. Derek Hall it is. The lead from John Priest in second, Cyril Jones is still up there in third. No front four or five are certainly not hanging around, but it looks as if there's going to be a challenge at the front. It's John Priest in that place. My leader, Derek Holden, looks as if he's going to the right in that third bench, and Derek Holden will be back underneath John Priest. The checkered bag for all this time, they cross the line together. Well, that's probably one of the closest finishes we've had this afternoon. Cyril Jones picked up the first early for the first finish between the two. Both Derek Cole and John Fries have been riding for many, many years. I think it's uh, not quite like right Paul and past masters, as I know Derek's still riding a few 375 events, and John Fries picks up your central event when he can. But three places only, if you can understand what I'm saying. We've got four riders coming out. Those riders are Peter Lloyd, number four, Pete Reed, number 71, Paul Hurry, number 86, and Richard Musson, number 773. Out of these four, only three will go through to the B final. Well, when you look at those four riders coming to the line, I think you'll realise the glass of entry that we've got here this afternoon. This is just to find three places in the B final. It's one, two, and three go through. The fourth place finisher misses out on both the A and the B final. So no qualifying place for the fourth finisher. An extra race on our programme to decide which three of these four riders go through into the B final. Paul Hurry leaves it going into that first bend. Richard Musson dives underneath him. Richard Musson leading as they go round that top bend. Paul Hurry's there with him. He reads in third place at the moment. This might be a race when we look at these four names on paper. Remember, two of them go through, one misses out. Richard Musson leads. Paul Hurry in second, Peter Lloyd in third, and Pete Reed is the man that's missing out at the moment. No, we know that can possibly change as Pete Reed goes underneath Peter Lloyd. The front two still scrapping it out for a Dive into that pit bend, almost together, they can almost lean on each other as they go into that pit bend. Richard Musson on the inside, both these two youngsters that have just come into the sport. Richard Musson certainly looking for a great future in Speedway, as equally is Paul Hurry. At his first adult ride, only four weeks ago, he was riding. He was a very confident rider. He looks to have lost touch with him a little bit. Uh, that is Pete Lloyd, perhaps, is going to be the one that misses out. The last lap flag goes for the Paul Hurry and Richard Musson. I'm sure they'll use this as a valuable experience. They go down that back straight for the last time in this run. So, the front three, we are going to see in the final. As they come across the line, it is going to be Paul Hurry, Richard Musson, Peter Reid, and unfortunately missing out in that runoff will be Peter Lloyd. Paul Hurry, Richard Musson, and Pete Reed. That's the lineup. The top point scorers would have got choice of position on the gate. So that gets drawn out of a hat to make sure, particularly with the cyclists, I think that might make a little bit of a 
an advantage, but I'm not too sure with the solos. Haven't really spotted anybody getting any advantage out of the uh, start gate. Looks as if we are still missing one or two riders. As we look across that start line, we can see that John Wormsley is right on the inside. John Boston next to him, Dave Wright next to him. Can't quite see who that is behind our starting marshals. Paul Hurry right in the middle of there as well, Rob Fortune. Pete Reed right out on the far side. And here we are missing one or two. Well, there's Alan Farmer I think we're missing at the moment. Unless that is Alan Farmer laid down in front of our starting official. Yes, indeed it is. So Alan Farmer stands up, the rest of the riders stand up. So, in my reckoning, I think we are one rider short. Richard Mutton, I think, is the rider we're missing, but the rest of them get underway. And away we go. There's one rider appeared from the pit box that is indeed Richard Mutton, so he's missed the start completely, but the rest of the riders are certainly gone as we look at that far side. That looks to me like Alan Farmer.
second at the moment as he gets very, very close on that top end. Steve Jewison almost turns it sideways trying to miss Rob Cameron. But as the front two get going, Richard Pickett tries to get around the outside of those deer. Those deer have been holding some excellent tight lines. As you can see, the passenger looks up and see Richard Pickett. top corner, he goes to the outside, now he's got to try and pull it back inside, Dave Steer knows he's there and Dave Steer goes to the racing line, comes out just in the lead, from Richard Bigger, but Bigger is much, much closer this time, Rob Cameron and Steve Smith are still there in third place, part of them just doing the three of them, Now Dave Steer must know that Piggott goes wide coming out of this bend, he'll be looking for the tight line as he comes out. The checker flag is there this time, it's going to be close to the line, but Piggott gets it. Richard Piggott and Marty Bailey get it on the line just from Dave Steer and Alan Bay. What a tremendous sidecar race, and that was only the big final. Well, dare I say, only the big final. It was Richard Piggott and Marty Bailey that made it there. It's a tremendous ride. Great to see Richard Piggott back on form. We've got to say hard luck today, Steve. What a tremendous race he rode. He finished in second place. Let's run through the list of qualifiers. You should already have them in your program. The qualifiers for race 35 are qualifying on a maximum. Three wins to get through into the final. That's Simon Wick, number 25. Equally, with three wins, number 26, Mark Laurel. Joining him on the line and only one point adrift was Marvin Cox and Joe Screen. They finished on four points apiece. And only two points adrift from Simon Wigger, Mark Laurel. They finished on five points, Martin Hagen and Andy Riley. On six points, Trevor Banks, and then joining them on the line is number seven, Gary Lobb. So the full lineup, 25, 26, 11, 17, 1, 54, 2, and 7. Well, you've seen all the qualifying races. There have been some fabulous close races this afternoon. I wonder who you tipped to the final. One of those two that scored a maximum? Will it be Simon Wick? He likes to win on this circuit. He's got a lot of people here I know supporting him. Mark Lorham is riding more and more grass track. He's very popular down on the boarded circuit at Tunbridge. Rode superbly well down, down there two weeks ago to be beaten only by Steve Schofield. I'm sure he's very determined to perhaps win here this afternoon. He also has a lot of followers. But what about Marvin Cox? Well, he's riding his speedway locally to us now. Perhaps he's brought a lot of supporters here this afternoon. He might have been saving a bit for the final. Let's not forget the amount of people that might be cheering for Joe Screen. Joe will Leonard Trophy meeting in Winchester. So, is he going to make it a double for the weekend? That's number one, Martin Hagen. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there cheering for him. Equally so, Andy Riley, possibly our most consistent finalist throughout 1990. He's there again this year, finishing in all the big finals wherever you go to a grass track. That name of Andy Riley is there. He rides number 54. And Trevor Banks. Well, we've seen Trevor Banks have some electric starts this year. Recently, a little baby boy was born to uh, the father of Trevor Banks, so uh, he tells us he's suffering with sleepless nights and all that sort of thing. I'm sure a lot of us can sympathize with him there. <laughs> he hasn't lost any of his form on the grass track. That's number two, Trevor Banks, and joining the lineup is the very, very popular Cornishman, Gary Lobb. Oh, looks like Trevor Oh, <laughs> 
Hang on to Joe's screen, as you can see now, screen.